I was born in Africa, and one of my earliest memories is my recognition of injustice. I was maybe six years old, and my family and I were on holidays. I can remember the chocolate brown booth that my brother and I slid into. I can remember the huge pile of buffet food. Hot breakfasts, they were my favourite. Crispy bacon, sunny side eggs, couldn't wait to get stuck in. While my mum and dad were sliding into the booth beside us, my attention landed on a tall African man who was standing not too far from where we were. What happened next has stayed with me my whole life. Just along from us, there were some diners, and they were laughing and making fun about the tall African man lined up for his breakfast. At six years old, I didn't really understand too much about race nor the complexities and challenges that are faced by so many. But what I did recognise was this feeling in my tummy that burnt like a fire raging inside me. I was mad. Why were they being so mean? I just didn't understand it. What I have since recognised is my intolerance for injustice, the fire that burnt and continues to burn to this day. I've seen a pattern develop for me, a pattern of speaking out and standing up against injustice. But it was one story in particular that has stayed with me and has seen me change the course of my life to the point where I stand here in front of you as founder of Rise Up Australia. I heard news about a lady who had made quite a journey. She had gathered up her eight-month-old baby and her three older children. She had jumped on a train in Perth in Western Australia. She had crossed our beautiful nation all the way to the Gold Coast. Now this lady, she was going to get to safety. She couldn't take too much with her on this day. She had her handbag, she had a small backpack, her baby and her three other children. She didn't take too much that day because to do so would have attracted the attention of the one person that was committing the most horrific violence against her and her children. This wasn't a stranger. This was a person who should be protecting them, respecting them, loving them. The person who was committing the unthinkable violence, this was the father of her children and her husband. When I first heard this, you know that flame, that fire in my belly from when I was six? Woo-wee! It was growing. It was there. This was a massive injustice. All I could think of was how could this be happening in our beautiful country? How could this lady feel so unsafe and that she felt that her only option was to jump on a train, cross the country to get to safety? So with the help of my amazing friends and family, we gathered together as much as we could to help this young family settle into their new environment, from beds to clothing to groceries, pantry item, everything you can think of, we got it sorted. And when we could do that within a couple of days, that was my light bulb moment, the moment where I knew that as a community, we could do so much more to help these families. When we surround ourselves with our people, these are the people that share your passion, your integrity, your moral compass. Together, you can make enormous change. Together, we are so much stronger. We can have conversations, we can change the rhetoric, and more importantly than anything, we can create a movement of change. 
when we look to community and uh, we look for examples of how history has uh, provided examples where a community can come together, you won't find more examples than when a community and a society is faced with a social injustice. Domestic and family violence is the biggest social rights violation our society currently faces. In Australia, there is one incident reported of domestic violence every two minutes. So already, since I've been speaking, there have been six calls to police across Australia from people who require help. Statistics of violence against women in Australia are absolutely shocking. And we, can, we know that the, this violence that is in the home, it impacts a child's development substantially. Research shows us that when ch a child grows up in a house of violence, they have great trouble connecting with their friends and family, they struggle through school, and their futures are significantly compromised. One in three Australian women have experienced physical and or sexual violence perpetrated by someone known to them. 61% of these women had children in their care at the time of the violence. 71 women were killed by violence by an intimate partner. One woman is hospitalised every three hours in Australia. Three women are hospitalised each and every week with traumatic brain injury. Intimate partner violence is the leading cause of ill health, disability and death for Australian women aged between 15 and 44, the leading cause. Sexual assault and domestic violence are by any measure the most common crimes committed in Australia. We are in a domestic and family violence epidemic and the discussion time is over. We need to act. Lives are being lost and futures are being destroyed. Research shows us that Australia has a very real issue with men's violence. Rise Up was created to drive awareness to domestic and family violence. There had to be some way that the broader community could actually be part of that solution. This is the only way forward. Australia is the lucky country, and for so many families and for so many people across Australia, they don't feel very lucky at all. No one talks about domestic violence, no one wants to talk about domestic violence, but we have to. Let's drag this beast out of the darkness so it has nowhere to hide. Let's shine that light on it. Let's unpack the cultural and societal issues that allow this antisocial behaviour to persist in our amazing country, in our community. Let's shift the shame for victims of domestic violence and give them their voices back. In just over the last year, Rise Up created over 260 homes for families who have exited out of refuge. We've supported over 400 children who have been displaced due to the violence. When families leave refuge, that is the point where we need to intercept and support these families. It's that pointy end, the point of no return. When families even consider thinking about leaving the violence behind, and when they understand what lies ahead of them, it can be very realistically the point where they go back to the violence. Rise Up provides the leg up that makes the difference between a family leaving the violence behind or moving forward. Rise for Liam is our school's program. So from school camps to school uniforms to after school activities, we've got it covered. Research shows us that when a child is more settled in their environment, the mum has more capacity to feel settled and stable and stay in the one space. If we are going to break the cycle of domestic violence, we have to address the issue and help these children. The, this is our future. 
The children are our future and we really need to see what's happening right in our backyard. So stepping out of a violent relationship takes enormous courage and inner strength. It takes the knowledge that there is a community out there waiting and willing to support them in their decision and commending them for the extremely brave decision to leave that violence behind. Every single person can do something to prevent violence. We can start by holding our friends and family accountable for their attitudes and beliefs. We can keep our eyes firmly planted on the perpetrators of violence. We can stop asking, why doesn't she just leave? And how about we start asking, why doesn't he stop hurting her? Domestic and family violence is a human rights violation. And I can quite confidently say to you tonight that as I stand here, we have zero tolerance for racial discrimination. Right? Let's commit to seeing domestic and family violence for the human rights violation it is. Let's commit tonight to bringing it out into the open. Let's commit tonight to pulling an end to domestic and family violence. So now you know what I'm passionate about. What is it that you are all passionate about? I'd really like you to have a little think about that. And while you do, in your TEDx bags, I'd like you to all reach down, please. There's a beautiful piece of artwork inside. If you can take it out for me, show me your lights. In honour of all the families affected by domestic and family violence, let's shine our light. That's amazing. In closing tonight, be kind to one another. Have compassion and understanding. We only have one go at this life, so make it your very best. You're it. You're the ones that can make this world the best place to live. Thank you.